Hello everyone, welcome to the new year of 2023 at the Azure Centric Podcast. Uh, we have a new format, we have a lot of good news, uh, we've been missing a lot of um, content, but now with the new year, new resolution, new projects, uh, let's keep uh, this community working. So my name is Marcos Nogueira, I'm an Azure MVP. Uh, and as usually, we are returning with the Azure Weekly updates on on Azure Centric. I hope you like this new format. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different from the the last times, but let's rolling in this case. So before we start. I'd like to thank to all the feedback that, that I received in the last couple of months, uh, asking if everything is okay. Yes, everything is okay. It's just being be busy. Um, and and I want to, to return all the, the, the good willing of everyone contacting me uh, to do that. And uh, the best way you guys can support me is to subscribe, uh, to like, and to smash that 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 like button or tell us tell me anything uh, regarding the or you want to see it or not uh, on this channel. Okay, so let's go with the first update. The first update it's a funny one to start the year. It's a private preview uh, on the fixture clothing. So this update. It's pretty cool because it's it's an AI update that is usually I don't bring over here at the um, at the Azure centric the weekly uh, podcast, but it's it's one that allows you to see what you are wearing, right, and to be able to just mark those uh, in a way that. Um, if you want to buy it or not, uh, or if you want to feature the, the, the type of clothing that you want to use it, it's pretty cool. It's, it's the way that you can index, in this case, your clothing, okay, by AI, by the video. So when you upload the video and when you use this feature, basically you are seeing the video uh, or the video is going there and you want to be able to... Uh, track the clothing and then on a track that type of clothing you can say that is a shirt that is a jacket that is a tie for example uh, or a button shirt and then you can do whatever you want to do it with those ai services um with those with those services that you want to do it you could be like selling you can be adjusting if you like that type of video um or that type of clothing it's easier for you to do so it's ai starting this year of 2023 in azure so pretty cool uh, on the way that that Azure is doing all of those type of things, I see that every time that that's happening, um, AI stuff. I, I love to hear what they are doing. Um, I never experience um, or I never experiment this. I just want to mention because when I was reading the updates, um, I found very curious this. So now we're starting to see, it's kind of, I think we're going on that minority report kind of way. Um, and, and I always love that part. It's one of, or one of my favorite movies. Uh, so yeah. So back to the normal updates. Okay. And now talking about the Azure backup for SAP Anna. Uh, so the general availability of December, in this case, 2022 updates. So there are quite a few updates in this case. Basically, they are mentioning three updates. The long-term retention ad hoc updates. So now you can give a custom retention ad hoc on demanding updates. So you can use a specific long-term to met your requirements in this case for uh, uh, your your retention, right? So outside of that schedule policy. So you still have that, that policy that you are doing the Azure Backup for the SAP Anna, but now you can customize and you can use different long-term retention 
after the outside of that policy. So this means that we have more flexibility to meet those requirements. So for example, you don't need to do this in all of those uh, updates, or not updates, backups in this case, uh, but those backups, like for example, if your policy, uh, if your standard says that you need to keep the data for one year, the monthly backup for one year, now outside of that policy, you can create those custom ad hoc backups that basically will create that um, uh, for you to just met those requirements. So it's it's pretty important uh, when we're talking about this type of data because SAP ANA, it's a very a dedicated database for SAP, right? And, and it's really critical to have those type of information uh, to meet those requirements. Another December update regarding the Azure Backup for SAP ANA is the partial restore as a file. So because SAP ANA, the way that works, SAP ANA, it's basically a in-memory uh, uh, database dedicated for, for SAP. So be able to restore points as a files, it will help you to just grab the information that you need. So you don't need to restore the entire database. That's the purpose over here. Uh, if you want to download the entire chain, you can. But if you wish to repeat that process, to just restoring on the file, you can, and then you can, you don't need to download the entire chain again. So it's just to grab those time frames that you want to do it regarding the Azure backup. The other, um, the other update that they that they announced in December, uh, but it's still coming in January, is the seamless integration with native clients and other tools. So earlier, uh, if you follow the scenarios, for example, that you have to switch back, um, uh, switch off the back end before the request. Now you can increase the you can increase the RPO. Uh, and on the steps, right, you can trigger those risk those requests using the native clients or any other tools. So, for example, the, cl the native clients you can use the on-demand uh, backup for local file system. You can use the SAP SAP ANA catalog cleanup, or you can even use the database for SAP ANA on uh, ANF. Right, triggering the, the 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 snapshot using the AZ um, AC snapshot tool that you have available for for doing that. So it's pretty cool what they are doing regarding this, um, and and uh, and allows you to just uh, using SAP ANA uh, on Azure Backup for SAP ANA as your native tool. You don't need to use third parties for that, right? Moving to the next one, we have the public preview IT service management connector. Uh, it's now certified with ServiceNow Tokyo version. So the ITSM uh, connector, right? It's now certified for the Tokyo version. So basically, what it is, is all of your Azure service, like for example, Log Analytics or Azure Monitor or any other service that they will communicate or they will connect in this case with ServiceNow for ticketing or for incidents management, right? Or anything that you are using the ServiceNow, it's now certified for Tokyo. So Microsoft and Azure is always try to just as soon as, as the other partners, in this case, ServiceNow, release a new version, um, it now it creates that connector um, and creates the public preview for that connector for doing this. So if you are using the Toco version of ServiceNow, now you can see um, that, that connector available to you. Again, like why we are always doing, or we I always advise, don't use this in your production, okay? Try to see it because it's public preview. Uh, I mentioned on this channel a lot of times um, that um, you, when you're using public preview in, in a lot of things, what you can do is the code, the code can change, the connector can change uh, when they come in GGA, right? And my experience uh, on Azure is 
very high 90% of the time, you need to redeploy. Um, and if you are customizing everything, which is good for you, if you are using the public preview, um, it, you are already uh, knowing what needs to be done, but I highly recommend you documenting that. So when the functionality becomes available uh, to you, uh, now you can use this as as a, a, um, another way to just improve when it becomes GA, right? And that, I think, is critical for that, correct? Um, in my opinion. So moving to the next one is the Azure VM backup. The, so, yeah, moving another backup, in this case, for, for the VMs uh, on GA. This one is very, is very curious because it's not a functionality. It's a feature. It's to correct something that when they launch, uh, it was happening especially with the SQL, uh, with the SQL VMs that you are um, backing up uh, with using Azure VM, right? So what happened was when you were backing up the Azure VM that was with SQL install it, okay? When you're doing this, it was triggering the VSS, that is the, the virtual um, storage service um, that basically creates all of that uh, configuration for you. So what it does is it will allow you uh, every time that you're doing a, a, a backup, it will do a full snapshot. Okay, by by do uh, by doing that a full snapshot, what will happen is the log sequence number, the LSN, it will reset. So every time that you're doing this, because it's a snapshot, you are resetting that. So this reset may cause problems during the recovery, and the end users they are unaware of the reset. Okay, so. What it is going to fix is this registry key that is going to be automatically since December 2012, okay, uh, is going to create a registry key called SQL copy only full snapshot set to true. So this, what it does, it will not reset the LSN every time that does a snapshot on your on your SQL, on that database, okay? In this case, on that VM. So it will allow you to just uh, uh, restore uh, without resetting the LSN. So this allows you to just have more possibilities of risk of recovery. So it's it's a kind of a fix that they found it that I think it's very interesting for these type of scenarios. Okay. So last but not least is the last update that is the at scale monitoring with Azure Res site recovery with backup center. So back, Backup Center is being the go-to place for all the customers that they are using Azure, that they are using the backups. So it provides a single unified management experience for all the enterprise that they are using the Azure backup. So now be able to have that monitoring inside of Azure Site Recovery, okay? It's pretty cool. So today... ASR customers, they can go to every recovery services vault to monitor their replication jobs. Usually, you have to go to replication job and you have to see it, what is going on. Now you have a monitoring tool uh, inside of the, uh, on the backup center uh, that allows you to have a single pane of glass that you can see all of those, uh, all of those jobs or what's happening inside of that replication and what's happening inside of, of everything that happened with Azure Site Recovery. It's important this because if you are using Azure Site Recovery heavily as I use almost like every single day, every single project that I'm working on, I'm using Azure Site Recovery. It's one of my main tools. It allows you to see what is being your replicate items eventuring on a day-to-day -day basis, okay, from a single view across the entire vaults that you have. Because usually you have different vaults uh, for different reasons, right? Even for different uh, regions as well, and allows you to do that. And 
by doing this, it simplifies your operational uh, regarding all of those items. Because before this, um, before this GA, you have to go to every single recovery vault to go to see what's going to happen uh, or what it is the status of those replicating uh, jobs inside of that uh, backup vault, in this case, the, the ASR uh, recovery service vault. Um, by using this backup center, now you can have a, a, a way to just have a single pane of glass, like I mentioned, to just monitoring all of your recovery vaults, okay? So it's it's pretty powerful, pretty quickly um, to just uh, maintain this, okay? Uh, with that, it's a very short week for Azure. Uh, we only have like five updates this week. It's way shorter than the other episodes. I hope that you guys like it. It was one of the feedbacks that that I got it. Uh, it was sometimes it was over an hour and you guys want just to see what was the updates for the week. So I hope that you guys like this new version. Uh, let me know uh, on the comments, on the feedback. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on every every place on Azure Centric. Uh, let me know if you like it, this, and I hope I can see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe and bye for now.